Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Happy Sunday. We're coming at you with a case of 2023 Bowman Baseball Jumbo Edition, 8-box picker team number 12. All card ship, except for paper vet and paper non-first prospects. Everything else ships. Very big thanks to this group for making it happen. Here, Thanks for spending a bit of your Sunday night with me as well. Bill with the Cubs, last spot mojo. There's everyone else right here as well. So if you have Bowman Jumbo 12 next game, that means you won those teams in that pack break. Now the next pick your team is in the store right now, jazbeescasebreaks.com. And we'll probably pop that into a filler after this. So if you're watching live, now is the opportunity for you to get your team straight up before, uh, before they're gone. All right, good luck everybody. Now Rex has a, a trivia question for us. What team and year was the first Major League Baseball night game? I feel like I knew this at one point, but now I don't. Um, I guess you're asking what, what home team was it, right? Who had lights first? I want to say the Cubs were, were among the last teams to, uh, to have a night game. Yeah, I say post-World War... No, it's got to be earlier than that, no? I want to say it was like 30s. And it was either a very popular team or a very or a not popular team who needed to get butts in seats during night games. <laughs> I think about what teams existed in the 1930s. I say, got to be an East Coast team. I don't think it was Fenway. One of the first teams in Major League Baseball history, the Reds. Cardinals? A red team? Is it, is it a red team, Rex? All right, so I'm going to breeze through this paper as quickly as possible. We'll stop for some of the some of the top tier guys that we want to take. Though here's Carlos Jorge for the Reds, 394 out of 499. It was the Reds. And we'll do an autograph recap at the end too. I say, so it Reds The reds were the red stockings originally? I guess they were. And the, what, what, what about the red? And red socks were just red socks? 
The Cincinnati Reds beat the Philadelphia Phillies 2-1 on May 24, 1935 in Major League Baseball's first ever night game. Courtesy of the recently installed lights at Crosley Field in Cincinnati. There you go. And who was the last team to have a night game? Was that what was that the Cubs at Wrigley? I don't think they installed lights until much later. And here's Shea Whitcomb. Astros, that's for Jordan, who won that team in the filler. And we got a blue shimmer. Joshua Baez, that's to 150. That's our first Drew Jones paper. Drew Jones, Spencer Jones, Justin Crawford. Edward Julian, Cam Collier are among the uh, the key youngsters. But listen, that's just for now. It's really worth kind of holding on to to holding on to all these guys and seeing if they turn into anything in the future. Like Andrew Painter, ninety-one out of one hundred and fifty. There's Cam Collier, Justin Crawford. And a purple paper, Gavin Cross, 48 out of 199. The ninth overall pick. Gilo is a uh, Royals fan. What can you tell us about Gavin Cross? you have, have any additional information on him? Yeah, the Cubs in 1988, first night game. I can't believe there was, like, it was just day games all the time for the Cubs up until the late 80s. Plot twist, when was the first day game? I don't know, when was the first official Major League Baseball game? Eighteen ninety something? There's Jorge Burgos. Cleveland, this is for you. James with the Cleveland Guardians. Nice purple chrome auto. Gavin Cross is top and looked good in spring training. All right, for whatever that's worth. It's a good tier. Be a future teammate of this guy right here, Bobby Wood Jr. Oh yeah, Wrigley was home to the Bears for many years. Juan Brito, Aqua Lunar Parallel, 84 out of 125. You can see the the craters of the moon up there. Rockies, that's for Chris. Won that spot in the filler. So there's a Spencer Jones for the Yankees. That's going to go to Oren, who got the Yankees straight up. Which I love. And Stephen Carney also got the twins straight up. You will find some numbered cards of these guys, maybe some autos. All right, so there's our first three autographs. Here's a Justin Crawford for Neil and the Phillies. Onwards.
Well, what happened in baseball today, ladies and gentlemen? Let's, let's, we can whip around the league while I rip open some packs. Let's see. The, uh, the Braves beat the Orioles on a Michael Harris single. Phillies, uh, Braves beat the Orioles 3-2 in the 12, in 12. Phillies beat the Red Sox 6-1. Schorber and, uh, and Walker lead Phillies over Boston, stop their, stopping their losing streak at 6. And stopping the Red Sox winning streak, I think, at 8 or something like that. Blue Jays pounded on the Pirates 10-1. Whitten Merrifield with four RBIs. And the Mets fall to under 500 as Doyle lifts the Rockies to a 13-6 win. Doyle. Yeah, Brent Doyle went three for five today, three RBIs. Um, Garrett Cole wastes a six-run lead. Rays beat the Yankees 8-7 in 10 innings. Salvador Perez homers and Royals avoid a sweep in a 5-1 win over the A's. The Cardinals waking up a little bit. Goldschmidt, three home runs. Cardinals in an eight-game streak and beat the Tigers 12-6. I think I saw somewhere that all three of Paul Goldschmidt's home runs were like well over 400 feet. Cardinals beat the Tigers 12 to 6. In 14 innings, Marlins beat the Cubs 5 to 4. Brewers beat the Giants 7 to 3, ending their 6-game losing streak. Rangers beat up on the Angels 16 to 8. Tavares and Garcia powering the Rangers. Uh, White Sox beat the Reds 17 to four. White Sox scored 11 runs in the second. Wow. Hanser Alberto, former Dodger, I think, four hits, career high four RBIs. Mariners beat the Astros three to one. Uh, Nationals beat the Diamondbacks nine to eight. Manessis, homer in the ninth. And the Dodgers in an exciting one. Mookie Betts hit a game tying home run in the ninth, and then James Outman with a three-run jack a little bit later on to give the Dodgers the win eventually, two-run jack. James Altman, is that? We have an early rookie of the year, NL rookie of the year possibility there, James Altman. Possibly. And here is Fraley Encarnacion, gold shimmer, 33 out of 50 for the Red Sox. It's going to be for Bryant, won the Red Sox in the filler. Thought that the Mets pitching staff would be better. I think they were counting on some older pitchers to, to come through, right? Although it's not like if keeping Jacob deGrom would have helped either. Oh, Joe specific trivia, all right, shoot. There's Jackson Holiday to 250. Purple Chrome for the Orioles. That'll be for Jordan. Holiday. Here's a chrome cam collier, or collier perhaps, not sure Mark, but that one's for you and the red legs. And 
And we've got a sky blue paper to 499, Ronald Acuna Jr. That's for Aaron and the Atlanta Braves. Who has the most home runs for the Dodgers? That's a very good question. I want to say it is... Hmm. Either Duke Snyder or Eric Karros. Here's Nelson Rada to 199. Angels, that's going to be for Tristan. Cam Collier, Spencer Jones Chrome, so we'll save a James Outman for the Dodgers, and there's a Tim Tawa. Gil Hodges would be my other guess. It is Duke Snyder, 389. And then Eric Carroll, maybe? Is he third on that list? And maybe 280 something, 290 something? Michael Golder with the Diamondbacks gets the Tim Tawa. And Mark Bissett with the James Altman rookie card. Um, I'd like to know. Hey, someone, everyone, look up your your team, your favorite team. Who's their home run leader? Like for Rex is a Cubs fan. Rex, who's the Cubs home run leader? I, I don't know. I'm not sure if Sammy Sosa played on the Cubs long enough to have the Cubs all time home run record. Could it be like Ron Santos? Karos is 270. Could it be... Yeah, I don't know. Who would have the all-time Cubs home run record? I don't know. Who else is in the chat? Gabe was in the chat. Gilo is a Royals fan. Who's the all-time home run record holder for the Kansas City Royals? Here's Abel Bastidas to 399, lime paper for the Tigers. That's going to be for Brian Heyman. Yeah, tell me who your favorite team is. Tell me who their home run leader is. Is it Sosa? I guess so. Did so. I, man, I guess. I get. I feel like I thought he played for like other teams, and maybe he spent his entire time with with the Cubs. There's Leover Paguero, 88 out of 150, Rookie of the Year favorites autograph. That's for Aaron and the Pirates. Yeah, someday. Easy notes. Is it Ryan Braun for the Brewers? 352 home runs? That make, George Brett. Um, duh. That makes sense. Royals, George Brett, 317 home runs.
Wow. And then Salvador Perez is second. Perez didn't have a 40 homer season up until a few years ago. Wow. You, you would have figured someone in the... Yeah, no, I guess maybe not. I was going to say, there, there probably had to be someone in the mid-90s to early 2000s that got like, I don't know, that knocked out a 250 or 300 home runs career with the Royals. But... I guess Royals were committed to not... Uh... I guess Royals were committed to not uh, not getting steroids guys on their teams in the 90s. I guess you're right. I guess in my head, Sosa didn't play that long of a Cubs, but I guess he did 13 seasons. Royals Park is big. That didn't didn't affect George Brett though. Next jumbo box, good luck. Hmm. Just Gilo, Rex, and Easy Note in the chat, huh? No one else wants to hang out? All right, no one else is interested in telling me who their favorite team is and who has the most home runs on their favorite team? Here's Jorge Ruiz. Who do you think has the most home runs on the Angels? You think Mike Trout already has that record? I'm trying to think of other home run hitters on the Angels that were with the Angels long enough to have the, the team record. It might be Trout already. It might be Trout already. I was going to say Reggie Jackson too, but I don't think he played for the Angels long enough to amass any kind of home run record. I don't have the answer. I don't have the numbers in front of me. I'll look it up later, but... We got Myro Shendrick Martinez, purple lunar to 199. That'll be for Mark and the Dodgers. It is Trout with three. He already has 350 home runs. How many seasons do you think he's missed due to injury over his career? You think it's two, maybe? I mean, that's that's possibly another hundred home runs between two seasons, right? And we got a hunter green in pink to one seventy-five for Mark and the Reds. I mean, that's yeah, that's actually really godly, right? Chilo saying, yeah, those trout numbers. Like, it kind of just feels weird when you're actually in it. And you don't really notice. <coughs> Excuse me. It's getting a little cold here now.
<coughs> Excuse me. Sort of like um, I don't know how do how do I describe it? It's like if you have a friend that you see every day for years and your friend becomes fat, you don't really notice it because you're kind of seeing it in real. Nice Jacob Berry, green grass autographs, anyone out of 99. You don't realize it in real time, but if you have a friend that you hadn't seen in years and your friend got overweight, then you're like, oh man, you, you packed on some pounds or vice versa if they're losing a lot of weight, you know? That goes to the Marlins, Mike Tower. There you go, Mike. I feel like that's kind of the the trout effect. Like while it's this is all this is happening in real time, he's kind of normalized what he has done from year to year. So it just I feel like you just kind of take it for granted, I guess is really the best way to put it. But then when you st step back a little bit, Especially when watch, wait till he starts hitting milestones. When it's like fastest player to hit this many home runs, fastest player to do this, fastest player to do that. So you know, once we start seeing that, then I feel like then it'll start really coming into pers into perspective. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's like kids too. You won't like, if you don't see your friend's kids. For a while, or a relative, or something that hasn't seen seen you know the kids in a year or two, you know they they grow up fast. Uh, George Brett hit 317 home runs in 20 seasons, and Trout has hit 350 in 11 seasons. If you back out a couple, uh, if you back out a couple injury plague seasons and you fill them with home runs for Mike Trout, it's like, you know, that guy might might make a serious run at the at the all time home run title, like legitimately, which is like kind of crazy to think about. But it, there, ooh, nice Yendry Rojas Invicta autograph, five out of ninety nine for the Friars. That's going to be for Matt, who won the Padres in the filler. Get some of the wrinkles out of that penny sleeve there. Does that mean bonus autograph, or is that the third? We've got Jorge Burgos to 199 Purple Lunar for the Guardians. That's for James. Just standard three autographs. What about pitchers? Who has the most wins on your favorite team? I think who has the most wins on the Dodgers? Drysdale, maybe? Don Drysdale, perhaps? Colfax didn't play long enough. I think even Kershaw is still, still behind on wins. Tonight when Rex walked into work, it was officially your 23rd anniversary with Kroger. Imagine how many cases of product you stocked in that time. Now 
we could probably do the math. How many cases do you generally stock a night? Someone's number to 125, Jackson Holiday. Nice. 59 out of 125. I, I like this insert. This is for Jordan and the Orioles. You got a Matt Mervis made his debut recently to 499. That's for Bill Macy and the Cubs. Last spot mojo. Let's see if we can find some of his ink in here somewhere. got Brooks Lee, 26 out of 100. I wonder how many uh, guys with the last name Dunn have the name Brooks. Like the old, uh, the old country group, Brooks and Dunn. Wow. Paul Splittorf, Splittorf? For the Royals, has the winds. Yeah, pitcher winds are a little weird. It, it really is dependent on, on you know, the runs the team can give you, which, which I think, it sort of feels like sort of an outdated stat in like fantasy baseball. Oh, your fantasy baseball uses quality starts in place of wins. Yeah, I was just gonna ask what some of your fantasy leagues do. We still do traditional wins. And um, we still do traditional wins, but we did a, f a few years, maybe two, three years, we tried to do, what did we try to do? It was a weird s stat <laughs> that we tried to use. There's Jason Curio, Purple Ray Wave. I think it was... I think it was wins minus losses or something weird like that. Didn't last very long in the league. So it was like weird because then it was like, you know, people would end up with like, I don't know, odd numbers for that. I think the idea was it was to, 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 to punish pitchers who may get an extraordinary amount of run support and vice versa. Brock Jones, the Brock Lobster going to the Rays. Oren. Maybe I'll pitch the idea of quality starts in my league. Yeah, like for example, you know, Josiah Gray, former Dodger prospect who I have in my fantasy teams with the Nationals now, has been for a few years. He's kind of having a breakout season, but but I think he's like one in five or something like that. So if you just use wins losses, like a lot of casuals will do, they'll be like, "Well, he sucks." And it's like, "Well, actually, he doesn't." <laughs> I think our league kicked around the idea of holds at one point too. I've been in leagues with holds. I actually ended up never liking them because because it's like I don't want to have to pay attention to 
you know, to random middle relievers who are getting holds. It's already hard enough to find a find closers, you know what I mean? But you use hold in addition to saves. I mean, who's the best holds guy <laughs> in Major League Baseball right now? Maybe a Dodgers reliever. Ooh, look what's coming up. We got Brandon Crawford to 299. Magenta paper for the Giants. That's going to go to James. We got a Justin Crawford, Carl Crawford's kid for the Phillies. That goes to Neil. And a blue lunar autograph of Drew Jones. 102 out of 150. To the moon! Michael Golder with the Arizona Diamondbacks. He bought the Diamondbacks straight up. That is nice. I have to admit, I I, I kind of like that lunar parallel. All right, those are our three autographs. Let's see what else we have here at the end. And then we'll get into the second half of this case. So Marcelo Meyer speckled 299 for Brian and the Red Sox. There's Edouard Julian, and the, uh, the Netherlands national anthem, real long. So every, after every F1 race, you're listening to this like really long thing whenever Verstappen's on the podium here. All right, four boxes down, four boxes to go. Uh, having Darvish one year on the Cub, had a ton of Ks, but just often couldn't get him runs, yeah. Was you Darvish number one on the number one in the rotation Rex that year? Sneaking in a middle reliever at the end of the week can squeak by a win. See, that's I don't know. Isn't that kind of BS though, Gilo? Are you are you feeling good about the fact that you got some random dude who got? Two holds at the end of the week has you win the week. You feel good about that? You can sleep at night as a self-respecting fantasy baseball manager? Yeah, because I was going to say, Rex, you know, generally, if you're at the top of the rotation, you're facing other teams' top of the rotations. And so your players are facing the... The better pitchers. I know Kershaw ran into that a lot in some years. The guys just couldn't score a single, couldn't score runs for Clayton Kershaw. So, Gilo, now that I'm curious, now I'm curious. What are the what are your your offensive your your hitting and and pitching uh, stats categories? What are you so what are you using? And it's a weekly league too, huh? I'm not sure if I like that. We I've tried weekly, it didn't do it for me. I think weekly is really nice, just for obvious reasons. Really nice for for football the NFL, but I feel like just baseball doesn't work as nicely. But I think a lot of people still must be in weekly leagues because I'll look at like fantasy baseball, you know, I'll, I'll 
you know, see fantasy baseball, read articles or podcasts, and they'll still talk about pitchers who have two starts in a week for for weekly leagues. So I guess people must be doing it. There's Blaze Jordan to 125. Aqua Shimmer, 48 out of 125. Got another Cam Collier. And a Drew Jones. Cam Collier going to Mark. Drew Jones going to Michael. Everything is default except for Collie starts and holds. I don't remember what holds were placed. So ERA, whip, strikeouts, ERA, whip, strikeouts, quality starts, saves, holds. We got a Dylan Frias, 81 out of 150, blue chrome autograph for James. Cleveland, this is for you. Hitting is average, runs, RBIs, stolen bases. Is there more? OPS? OBP? Both? Nice. Another lunar, Edward Julian. Those lunars aren't numbered. Use OPS. I can't remember that's default. Got it. And there's Oscar Colas. Pink paper to 175. The pink paper. What do we? What do I use here? I'll look at that next, when I'm ripping open the next. Uh, Next box, let's finish this. Well, we should be looking for two more autographs. We got Damon Keith, Dodgers autograph for Mark Bissett. Not so smart question. What's the difference between OPS and OBP? OBP is just regular on base percentage. I think OPS is slugging, your slugging number, plus your on base number, and you add those together. Just kind of a quick overview way of seeing how a player does. So, for example, all right, Giancarlo Stan's lifetime OPS is 890. I think anywhere between like, I guess 700 to, is it 700, would you say? I don't know. What does everyone think? 700 is pretty elite. I mean, 1,000 is elite level. Just power and ability to get on base. 890 is really good. Lifetime for Giancarlo Stanton. All right, Salvador Perez, 764. That's pretty good for a catcher. It's Kyler Fedko, 200 out of 499. Twins, refractor autograph for Stephen Carney.
We got a green grass, William Bergola. 64 out of 99. Yeah, 700 plus is probably good, right? That's kind of what you want to see. And some players get it because they got a great walk rate, so they're on base a lot. You know, some guys get it because they're, their slugging percentage is higher just because they're slugging more. They're getting more extra base hits. Yeah, I like OPS. It's a nice, complete kind of overview sort of stat. Rewards, you know, especially in fantasy baseball, rewards kind of like guys who walk plus the doubles, triples guys, but maybe not necessarily home run guys. So my 16-team keeper auction league, a lot, of smart, a lot of smart baseball guys in this group. We use batting average. I need to work on that. I am not even middle of the pack on batting average. Home runs, I'm second place on home runs. OPS, I'm at 752. The leader is 806. I need to I need to do work on that. We have a runs produced category, which I think is runs plus runs scored plus RBIs minus home runs. I don't know why we do that. It's a, it's it's a fine stat, but I think we I think the idea was we we didn't want to use just straight runs and RBIs. Because that's kind of a, you know, so I guess sort of sort of old-fashioned stats, but, but I think runs produced is runs plus RBIs and backs out home runs. Maybe as a way to reward just the non-home run hitters, and then stolen bases, and then um, pitching is ERA, Ks, saves, and wins and WHIP. Standard. I need to I need to work on average and my overall OPS. You're thinking, Joe, if you're if you're in second place in the home runs, why is your OPS so low? Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> that's a problem. A lot of a lot of a lot of home run hitting dudes who are not doing anything else otherwise. I need that OPS, Chilo. I need that for at least a couple of weeks to get me back towards the top half. I'm still third in the league, but those are my areas of where I need to improve. And I just need to get into the playoffs. We have a month-long Roto playoff. All right, next box, good luck. We got Ryan Clifford, Houston Astros. That'll be for Jordan. Is a mushrooms documentary? I'm gonna watch that later. Uh, I'll watch. I'll watch some golf, even though I watch a lot of that today. Who would you, what would you rather have? A guy that hits bombs but never singles or the guy that always singles but never hits bombs?
I mean, if it's just one guy, I'd rather have a guy that hits singles all day long. And they can always find a couple guys that can hit bombs. I mean, that's sort of a... I mean, it's sort of an odd question because it's like it's as if I can only have one player, one type of player. So bets to one seventy-five. It's one fifty-three out of two ninety-nine speckle autograph. I mean, if you're constructing a a baseball team, you need a little bit of all that. You get if you add a bunch of guys that all they do is hit singles at the top of the lineup, then in the third or fourth spot have the guy that hits bombs. There's Ronnie Simon to 4.99 for the Rays. That'll be for Orin. Yeah, otherwise, otherwise you end up like Gilo's Royal singles and never bombs. World World Series motto. I guess that could work too. You're asking because there are people that don't like certain players because all they do is hit home runs. Hmm. That's sort of a weird take for those people. Why would that matter? I mean, if you if your entire team was like that, then I guess that's a problem. You know, I mean, you got to have a better balanced team. Oh, like Schorber. It's all or nothing with it? I mean, what do they want? What do they want everyone to be? They want everyone to be three hundred hitters and hit a modest amount of home runs. They just want just a perfectly balanced player. Otherwise, they won't be happy. Dernish Valdez to four ninety nine. It's an odd argument, isn't it? But I suppose if they're talking about. I don't know if they want like a favorite player. Yeah, I mean, everyone everyone likes different styles of players. I mean, I don't mind Kyle Shore. You, 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 everyone needs a could use a Kyle Shore type player. Here's three out three ninety nine lava Daniel Gilarte for the Brew Crew. That'll be for Nick and the Brewers. Here's Daniel Gilarte, 24 out of 150. Blue paper for the Brewers. That'll be for Nick. It gets me thinking. It's like I, I don't know if if I would dislike Schwarber just because it's all or nothing. Especially nowadays, it's like that's who he's been. So so you I don't know. It just feels weird criticizing him for that or actively disliking him for that. It's not going to change. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I if if 
if I break it down like that, what do I what do I admire in my players and the players that I tend to like? I like players who are clutch. You know, I think I think players who are clutch who can perform under you know, in a in a disadvantageous position and they could battle back from that or you know, make a high pressure shot or a hit or a pitch or something like that. I I like that a lot. It generally requires a level of uh, a level of mental toughness. I'm watching some golf here, which is why I think golf is so great. You know, because because of the obviously you have to have the physical talent to swing and hit a ball, but you know, the mental toughness to to continue with that, I think, is important. It would be interesting if the Cardinals explored Contreras in the outfield, and it works. I mean, Schwarber was a catcher. It seems like when most players are catchers, they don't ever move anywhere else. I don't know if that's entirely true. They moved Buster Posey off of catching and moved him to first. You could even argue that that the Twins kept Joe Maurer at catcher too long before they moved, before they had, they had him play first more. Closer Kenley Jansen started his career as a catcher before they converted him to a pitcher. Craig Biggio, Hall of Famer Craig Biggio started as a, as a second baseman or as a catcher before they moved him to second base. I feel like catching is the position that players move off of more commonly, here's Colby Thomas for the A's. That's for Alan Murdoch because I think catching is such a, especially if you were a decent hitter. You know, catching is such a physically grueling position that oftentimes you're moving those guys off of catching whenever you can. I mean, Salvador Perez, the DH is going to help a lot with that, too. Sometimes players are just blocked. Some catchers just blocked it by other players in other positions. But the DH, the universal DH, I think is going to help a lot of catchers be able to slide into a DH spot. There's Wilson Contreras. Preserve their legs. It never goes the other way, though. I mean, you're never going to see a shortstop turn into a catcher, an outfield turn into a catcher. Right? What's making some angry, the Cardinals, they have three catchers on the roster now? Do they really? There's Vaughn Brown. I like what he's doing with the V there, 61 and 75. I hope he makes it. So that would be cool to see in future sets. It's going to go to James and the Giant Peach. James and the Giants. There's Michelle D uh, Dason to 499. For Jordan and the Orioles. Alex Gordon, G Lo's favorite player because of its clutchness. Yeah, I think that matters. Cam Collier and Drew Jones. I mean, I don't think, is Neiser supposed to be Andrew Neiser? Kneiser? Neiser? Is the K silent? Like knife? Um, I don't think he's supposed to be up for very long, though, right? So Oscar Colas, green paper to, four, to 399. It'll be for James and the White Sox. 
It really all depends on where they're playing. I mean, baseball more and more seems to be a lot more flexible in positions. There's a lot more, like basketball, a lot of positional flexibility. Point guards can play multiple positions. Centers can play as point guards nowadays. They can bring the ball up. We're seeing that a lot with baseball these days, too. Yeah, the Royals have three catchers, right? But MJ Melendez is playing the outfield or outfield more. All right, I, I suppose it all it just depends on how they deploy all those catchers. If you can, if you think about it, Wilson Contreras, if he's considered the a regular DH now, then they technically only have two catchers on the roster, right? Cardinals, those Cardinals fans shouldn't be complaining. There's Von Brown again, refractor autograph. Might be building a rainbow here, James. There you go, cool auto. Ah, I see. So they, they might keep Neisner up a little bit longer. Well, guess what? Contreras doesn't play catching right now. He's a DH now. Kyle Harrison neck. Well, it won't be in this box. We've pulled our three. We have three more autos in the last box. Yeah. Well, I, th I think this. The, I think the Cardinals are are. Uh, <laughs> here's Jace Young, Josh's brother. I think the Cardinals are uh, have been spoiled for a long time with elite catching that they can just pencil in from season to season, year to year. And now they realize, oh, wait a second. <laughs> I'm, we're not used to this. What's going on here? <laughs> why is this? Why isn't this guy calling calling uh, perfect games and just managing the defense? Just magically. Final box coming up. He was, I mean, yeah, it's not easy to replace a guy like Yadier Molina, both in the clubhouse and on the diamond. So now they're, it just looks like they're just kind of making knee-jerk reactions, especially if they're, since they're not playing good baseball either. Like that's the, it's the pitching staff's fault. It's the catcher's fault. I feel like they almost... I think they almost made it to... I don't know. I think they kind of was like, was like, oh, we lost Yadier Molina. Let's get the first free agent catcher on the market and bring him in without really thinking about what his fit on that team's going to be. And admittedly, I think that's what a lot of people were like, well, Cardinals need a catcher, Wilson Contreras. <laughs> you know, it's kind of what everyone said. Maybe they would have been better off just kind of slowly bringing up a young defensive catcher. You know, if that's really want what they wanted their identity to be. You know, Wilson Contreras is a, you know, above average defensive catcher, but he's no Yadier Molina. LBC for real, what's going on in the Twitch stream? Goes to show that one guy really can, yeah, especially if you're a Hall of Fame catcher, that's handling your pitching staff every single day. I think in baseball, that's probably really, especially if you have a catcher like Yadier Molina who's controlling an entire staff. I think that argument really, generally speaking, goes to goes down to the catcher in a lot of teams. Not, you can still win without a catcher, but but. 
I think uh, I think the Giants, San Francisco Giants, has had a lot of a lot of trouble with their catching spot ever since Buster Posey left the organization, who was a leader, a leader on and off the field, and been able to manage the pitching staff. There's a glider Figuero for Texas. That'll be for Jason. So yeah, I think that that's. I think the catching position could be that important, especially if you rely on that catcher there. Can I name the other two Molina brothers? I should be able to, but but with all these other names flashing ahead of me right now, I, I have to admit, I can't think of it off the top of my head. LBC for real loved all the Molinas. Yadier, Javier Molina? Is a Javier in there somewhere? Ah, Jose. Molina and Benji, that's right, Benji Molina. Were they all catchers? One played for the Angels, was, was it Benji that played for the Angels for a while? Didn't one, did one play with the Padres for a while? And there's Juan Sorella. Purple Chrome autograph for the Yankees. That's going to go to Oren. There's Randy De Jesus for the Halos to 75. Yellow Lunar. For Tristan and the Angels. Almost done, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for hanging with me. I appreciate the company, especially in a longer break like this. I keep thinking that I, that like I kind of see like the gold of a super refractor, something like that. I'm eager to see one. I haven't pulled one a super refractor yet. We got Eric Brown Jr. Purple paper to 250. Should be expecting one more autograph out of here too. Oh, we were now, now that we got some we got some people in the chat here. Who is now that Yadi or Molina is gone? I think Rex was asking this question earlier today. Now that Yadi is uh, retired, who is currently? I don't have an answer, but who is currently the best defensive catcher in Major League Baseball right now? Jay Gates, what's going on? Oh, LBC for real. Watch to the end of this break. After I do the recap, you'll see what the biggest hit of this break was. It's called a tease, ladies and gentlemen. It's pro professional tease right there. We got uh, Andres Mesa, 127 out of 299. Uh, speckle autograph for the Rangers. That's going to be for Jason. Have I pulled a pearl pack out of hobby yet? I've, I've not done a single case of hobby. Jay Gates has seven minor league teams around you. <laughs> nice, good for you. Is that has that stumped everybody? No one's uh, no one has a thought on who takes the mantle of best defensive catcher in Major League Baseball right now. 
LBC was saying Logan O'Hop for the Angels was looking very good. Went down with an injury. I know. I had him on my fantasy team. I had a nice little rotation between between him and Cal Raleigh. Now I'm stuck with Cal Raleigh, who can hit the homer but kills me an average. It's Corey Seager, green paper to 399. Edward Julian for Minnesota. We did find our third three autographs out of here, so we're looking for parallels. Jefferson Rojas, 92 out of 125. Rushman, yeah, is I think I think Rushman can call a decent game, right? I think a lot of the shine is on there. He is. I think a lot of the shine is on on how well how well he can hit. You know, but I think maybe his catching might be underrated. But yeah, maybe, maybe the question is not as clear. Maybe the answer is not as clear. Maybe there's no clear cut who's the next, who's the best defensive. I don't know if I have a guy, <laughs> to be honest with you. Best defensive catcher? I don't know. It might be some just some light hitting catcher on some team who can frames frames the pitch pretty. Like who's throwing out guys a lot? I, I was gonna say Austin Barnes, but Dodgers catchers have a hard time. My Dodgers have a hard time throwing guys out. But they call good games, so. James is sticking with Sean Murphy. That's not a bad, not a bad one. All right, recap for uh, 2023 Bowman Baseball Jumbo Edition 8-box. Pick your team number 12. Pretty solid break. A lot of nice color. A lot of nice autographs. A lot of nice ink. We got that nice Jacob Berry. We got the Paguero Rookie of the Year favorites autograph. And we got a nice blue lunar Drew Jones on card autograph 102 out of 150. There you go. LBC for real. This is the big hit of the break. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? There you go, Gladiator. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. Thanks for keeping me company through this long break. And I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.